Okay, we're going to start our little episode on drivers. Before I get into making the drivers for my uh, tank track or my robot track, I want to point out a couple of things about drivers. Drivers allow you to change the properties of one object uh, by examining the properties of another object. And so uh, in this case, I'm going to use this guy, and he's got a called cone right now. I'm going to call him my controller, and we're going to take the properties of his Y value, and we're going to use it to manipulate the rotation of the cube. And so just to see how that's done, let's go ahead and call the cube cube. That's fine. So we've got uh, this guy's the controller. Uh, maybe we'll call this guy uh, target. And so when I move, what I want to have happen is that when I move this guy, the cone on the Y axis, it's going to rotate this guy on the X. And so to do this, it's actually pretty simple. A couple of things we got to do. First of all, I'm going to come over to my, uh, what do I want to change? I want to change this guy. And so I select him, I go over to my target, and I want to say, I want to change, I can see the x-axis going right through the center here, I want to change its rotation on the x, and so I'm going to add a single driver. Notice that change is purple, that tells me that uh, nothing can change this uh, x rotation except for a driver. So let's go ahead and see if we can put a driver in now. We're going to go over to uh, our timeline, we're going to change that to a uh, graph editor. And the graph editor has a couple of settings. There's F curve and there's drivers. We're going to choose drivers. And notice that this guy shows up because I have it selected over here. This purple highlighted point is pointing to this guy. And I need to see over here by hitting the N tab, I'm coming into its properties. And uh, I'm going to come down here. And so what I want to do is say, what do I want to use to control this? So the object that I'm going to use is the controller. That's the cone. And so I'm inside, the target is selected, I've come down here, I've taken the controller, and I've taken notice it says it's X location, I'm going to change that to its Y location. So there's the Y location. And so what I'm going to do is when I change the Y location here, it's going to change the X rotation on the object that I have selected. And so the other thing I need to do is give that variable a name. I think I'll go ahead and say, uh, since this is going to be uh, driven by the uh, Y location, I'm going to say um, cone Y. And so that tells me what's going on there. And that's the name of the variable. I can copy that in. This is the expression panel. I can put all, basically, any kind of mathematical expression I want in here. Um, and uh, I put that in there. Now, notice I have an error here. And this is a uh, feature. I guess this is something that's going on in later versions of Blender. What's going on is that Theoretically, somebody could do harm to your computer uh, by putting scripts in here, and so it's going to force me to first of all save this, and I'll call this as a cone test. And once I have that saved, now it says, "Do you want to reload trusted?" And I'll say yes. And so at this point, uh, that error goes away, and what should happen now is, as I move this, I can see as I move the cone on the y-axis the box spins. So the cone is the controller, and I attached its Y, its measurements on its Y axis to this guy. And so that seems pretty Okay, now we want the wheels to move. When I move this box, this box won't be seen. It's an empty. And I've parented uh, every one of these things as a child of the box. The box is the parent of all three wheels, the track, and actually the um, the curve, the Bezier curve that I have on the inside. And so what I want to do is when I move this box along the x-axis, I would like to change the y rotation of this guy. And so I'm going to come over here. I've got my target selected. My target is W1. And I'm going to go over to its y rotation. I'm going to add a single driver. Now at this point, that turns purple. I'm going to come back over to my timeline window. And I'll just use this window to show my graph editor. And I'll remember to go to drivers. Uh, it remembers that from the last time, and so now I'm going to click on this guy, and notice this window shows up, and so I'm going to choose uh, the um, box, which is going to be my controller, and as I change its X location, so I'll say uh, box X, as I change its X location, then I would like the rotation, uh, my Y rotation of the target to change as well. And so I'll come back and I'll copy that variable name up into my expression, and I will hit enter. And notice I'm not having any errors here, so I've saved this. I'll just go ahead and save it one more time. 
And uh, at this point, as I move my box along the X location, notice that wheel is turning. So that's working fine. Now I could add that driver to all three of these, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm just going to select this guy. And I don't know what the um, what the convention is on this. I don't know if this is going to be the way people normally do it, but I'm just going to add a copy rotation constraint. So constraints are not the same as drivers, but if I say copy constraint, uh, copy rotation, and for copy rotation, I'm going to just choose just the Y axis, and I'm going to choose wheel one. Now what's going to happen is this wheel's rotation is attached to this wheel's rotation, and so very simply, they're going to move together. And I can do the same thing with this wheel. I'm going to go ahead and add a constraint. Notice the constraints are right next to the prop, or right next to the uh, modifiers, and I say add uh, copy rotation. Again, I'm going to choose uh, unclick rather or unselect X and Z, and I'm just going to choose uh, wheel two this time. And so now, as I grab this guy, all three wheels are turning as the empty moves along the x-axis. Now the other thing I want to change is this guy, so I'm going to add another driver for this, and we don't want to rotate that. We notice that when I choose this guy, when I change its location, since it's bound to the curve, its location is moving. It's not the rotation of the track, it's actually its location, and so I'm going to come back up here to, I've got my track selected, I'm going to come to its um, x location, and I'm right here I'm going to add a single driver. And at this point, if I select that guy, what I'll do is I'll take the uh, X location and I'm going to attach that to um, the, let's see, the empty, which is called box, and I'm going to change its X location because I did that last time, it's still there. And now I'll do the same thing with the variable names that I did before. So I'll call this guy box X again, since this is a different object, I can use the same variable name uh, within this object. It's going to be a different box X that I had the last time. But it's doing the same thing in a different object, so I'll go ahead and give it that same name. And over here in the expression, I'll paste that in, and I'll hit Enter. And I'm not seeing any errors, so I'll go ahead and say File Save. And at this point, what I would like to see is that as I move the box, uh, oops, as I move the box along here, I see not only the wheels are turning, but also uh, the tread is moving along. And notice they're moving along very well. And so that is uh, going to be um, the start of adding rotation animation to my robot wheels.